good morning good afternoon good evening welcome to the moon i'm your host of this evening lawrence ray and today i'm joined by my one fantastic co-host ricardo martinez as jerry is currently throwing up um and today we are interviewing one half of uzi crypto carol who is an enthusiastic brazilian bitcoin and crypto fanatic uh, who teaches those who speak portuguese uh, and english i suppose all about bitcoin and crypto on youtube and instagram uh, Carol, it's awesome to have you here today. To the bem. To the bem, Lawrence. Glad to be here. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Awesome. Well, we're happy to happy to have you. Um, and yeah, I guess to get us started off on the on the podcast, uh, we know that you're involved in the Bitcoin and crypto world. But to kind of get us going, I'm going to ask you a very simple question: What were you doing before Bitcoin, and how the hell did you find Bitcoin and come across it? Well, I was a dentist, I had a clinic and for a long time, and I never thought about uh, flipping up my career, but I started to study Bitcoin and I fell in love, fell into the rabbit hole as well. And I started with uh, small steps and me and my partner in the clinic, I ha we had a clinic together, we decided to accept Bitcoin as payment and we try to visit other places that accept Bitcoin as payment as well. And this was like a um, shift in the in our point of view, because we started to thought about create content for Brazilians that would like to accept Bitcoin and to study about Bitcoin. And it was pretty crazy because my family didn't expect this flipping. And uh, it was amazing because I thought, uh, Dentistry is guaranteed. I already have it. I can come back if everything goes wrong. If use of crypto and our project about education goes wrong, we can go back to the former career. But uh, fortunately, it went pretty well. The project grew a lot and I'm not regretted uh, and want to come back to the dentistry. But this was uh, my career before use crypto and to um, help Brazilians to know about Bitcoin. Well, okay, so if I have any issues with my teeth, I'll get in touch while I'm here in Brazil. Um, but yeah, I suppose, um, so obviously you're a dentist and then as you say, you started like reading about and learning. Do you remember what it, like, do you remember the first time you did hear about Bitcoin? Like, what was it that, was it just someone told you or did you see about it online or, or, or what was it? Do you, do you remember? It was 2017 bull run. I got into the top, like uh, most of the Bitcoiners and I, at that time, I was thinking about investment, how to diversify my portfolio. And OK, it went down and I hodled. And that, that was a time when I started to study Bitcoin. So it was pretty amazing, this experience, because I, I am the class of 2017. And I felt everything like going up, going down, how is a bear market. And that's when I first heard about Bitcoin. But that time I was just the investments philosophy. I didn't thought about Bitcoin as a Bitcoin standard or, or how it could change the world or how it could flip a fiat system. So that's when I heard first at a bull cycle of 2017. Gotcha. Okay. And so obviously you guys uh, have, have moved on a lot from 2017 when it comes to your knowledge and also what you're doing uh, in life. I say going from being dentists to basically I'd say I'm trying to think of the best way to describe you guys. I feel like you're Bitcoin teachers because um, it's like, you know, you're spreading the word. It's kind of like uh, not preachers because that's a little bit too sort of religious sounding, but teachers. Um, it's quite a big change to, to make. Um, what was it? Because obviously you said like that you you guys began to think, OK, maybe we should start like telling people about this and kind of like, you know, spreading the word and things like that. Um, but I suppose... You, you guys created like Instagram and a YouTube in, in order to do that. I'm assuming it was something you did like on the side at first, a very beginning, and then it maybe took over. Um, but I suppose like what, what made you choose the name use crypto? Is it like, uh, were you guys kind of from the beginning thinking people should kind of spend like their crypto and like learn to use it that way? Or was it more like, is it just a random name you guys picked? <laughs> That's a great question. We started uh, studying money. And we decided to use everything that is not fiat. So that's why we, the name use crypto, because 
at that time we had the the perception that everything was better than fiat money so we started to use all the cryptos all altcoins and also bitcoin but with time we started to differentiate altcoins and bitcoin and now we are, we are a project more focused on bitcoin and we talk a lot more about bitcoin we also talk about other altcoins because um, here in Brazil, there's a lot of demand to talk about other projects, and we want to show the difference to Brazilians. What is the difference between other altcoins and Bitcoin? And as an opportunity to to spread the knowledge about Bitcoin as well. So we we started use it using everything that was not fiat and trying to um, to tell people about this new market that was growing and was being created and started with Bitcoin. So um, that's why I use crypto. We felt the need also to get out of the computer and go to the real life, go to the merchants and ask, ask them why they are accepting Bitcoin or other cryptos in their business. So we started creating video contents about um, every city that we passed through, like Porto Alegre, Florianopolis, San Francisco. We've been to El Salvador uh, last year and we interview merchants that already accept Bitcoin and other cryptos at the beginning. And to show that to Brazilians, they can already accept Bitcoin and other cryptos in their business. They already can do it. So we started this journey. And also we felt the need to teach also about uh, financial education and technological education. That is the basis to, to learn about Bitcoin as well. So we started to create content, not just about usability, but also about how to deal with the volatility, how to insert Bitcoin in the portfolios, because I was already in stocks and uh, bonds, Brazilian bonds investor before Bitcoin. And I felt the need to teach uh, how to deal with money, how to deal with volatility, because it's a basis for those who want to start investing in Bitcoin and those who want to start using because the volatility can make um, a little confusion for those who want to, to use it. So we thought about why don't uh, create content about all of this kind of uh, things you need to learn before uh, start using and learning and studying uh, Bitcoin. I know Brazil has had um a high percentage of currency devaluation over the last few years. What impact has that had on people adopting crypto? Uh, we are seeing a, right now a lot more adoption. People are starting to notice the inflation problem. Here in Brazil, we have a history of hyperinflation in the 80s and 90s, but Brazilians remember, but not that much, that much. but since the start of the pandemic, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies are starting to get visibility, not just about um, the price going up, but also as an inflation hedge. This knowledge about how to protect from inflation is uh, growing. And in 2020, Brazilian real, the Brazilian currency was one of the worst in the world. So this kept the attention about how Bitcoin could help Brazilians to survive in this environment of hyperinflation or inflationary uh, moments, especially because we have this history of hyperinflation and we are watching closely Argentina and other countries that are beside us, uh, so how they are dealing with this uh, inflation problem and how Bitcoin is helping them to, to keep their purchasing power when the system fails. Yeah, I am um, from, because when I first went to Brazil, it was beginning of 2020 and, um... You've obviously uh, seen since what 2017, like how the crypto and Bitcoin space has changed. Um, but even for the two years it's been since I was first here, like it, it's changed a lot. Like I remember then looking at the different exchanges, and it was kind of like you had Mercado, Bitcoin, Foxbit, a few others, and and like the the user interfaces were pretty shit to be honest, uh, from my from my feeling. And like you could only get like five or six different cryptocurrencies. Uh, in a lot of them as well. Um, I think Binance, I think, hadn't really made a major effort either at that time. And now, like, the whole market and everything's changed. Um, 
But I, I, I saw, and one thing I always thought about Brazil was that people, um, when I visited, was that people were a lot more just like open to the idea of Bitcoin uh, than most other countries. Like when you just talk to a random person that I'd meet at a waterfall or something, I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm into Bitcoin. They're like, oh, okay. Like I've always been interested in that, but I don't understand it. And like, that's generally what I hear. Whereas in the UK, people were like, it's a scam, stay away, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh no. Um, so, and I saw a study from Visa that I think said that, um, Brazil had the most crypto curious population. I think in the, I think it was in the world, if not in uh, the Americas. Um, so I guess like how much, how much have you seen a change in people's lives around you? I guess uh, because obviously your guys' lives have changed a, a, a ton. <laughs> um, and like how much have you seen the Brazilian market like develop and and the, the crypto community develop as well uh, in the time that you've been involved? It grew a lot, especially because we have all the kinds of people impressions about Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. There are the no coiners, the economists that uh, shifted their narrative. They once said that Bitcoin was a scam. It doesn't worth nothing. And now they are creating content about Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. And there's a lot of people that thought it was a scam, especially because here in Brazil, we have a huge number of scams involving cryptocurrency. And one of the, the countries that have a, a lot more scams than others, but we are really curious, we are really open and we are really connected. I think it's the, the fourth or the fifth most connected country in the world in kinds of mobile, mobile use and internet use. That's why in social media use as well. I think that's why we're really curious and the market here grew a lot. Uh, Last year, the exchanges um, had 400% growth in volume in negotiation of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So not in um, just in content and producing uh, uh, business around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but also the exchanges grew their volume of negotiation through uh, 2021. So here it's um, uh, a good territory to grow this, the business. Our, uh, our central bank is trying to compete with Bitcoin. In my point of view, they are creating their own uh, CBDC and they are partnering with some exchanges and inclusive with uh, DeFi uh, protocols to create the, their own CBDCs. I think it's a, it's a good country to keep the eyes on because we have a good population that wants to know about cryptocurrencies. They are starting to learn. We have a business growing here and we have a currency that is not that strong and maybe it's a good place to 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 watch and see how it will evolve for us our life changed a lot because i think we we started in a good in a good moment as well we started in a bear market where the educational content was not that strong around here and speculation was more common between the content that uh, were the producers were creating and we could uh, establish a, our kind of content and create a way, a new way to create Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies content. And our project grew a lot since then. We are now with um, 100K followers in YouTube and Instagram. And it, we're really happy to see that even with the, the fall in price from November to now, there's still a lot of demand to study Bitcoin, study cryptocurrencies. They are uh, keeping on the, on, the, on the social media, asking us questions. So I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a good moment to start study, in, even for Brazilians as well. Uh, we've seen countries take different approaches to how they deal with crypto, like, for instance, China, they banned exchanges, they banned mining. El Salvador, on the other hand, has just made Bitcoin legal tender. What are the regulations like in Brazil? Like where, where do they sit? The regulations are out an asset. Uh, uh, we pay taxes over Bitcoin transactions um, that are superior to 300K reais, PRL. And the exchanges here already report to, um, to, to the government when everyone does a transaction using an exchange platform. So we are one of the countries that has um, 
already a kind of a regulation, not a specific, but from taxes, pay, payers, and from exchanges, there's a lot of uh, laws that already uh, are specific about cryptocurrencies. I guess that when Central Bank launches the Brazilian CBDC, they have held digital. Maybe the regulation will be more specific and trying to, to be more clear about how cryptocurrencies will be uh, regulated, how CBDCs will, will flow, how everything will work. Right now, it's not that clear, but it's more uh, established than other countries for good and for bad as well. Would you say that they're friendly regulations or hostile towards crypto startups and businesses? They are not hostile. They are not uh, restrict restrictive, but they are not. Uh, they are trying to compete with cryptocurrencies. They are not uh, allowing to too much to make transactions, but they are treating as an investment. They are. They don't talk too much about as payments. Yeah, I mean, any anyone can start an exchange, and and uh, generally in Brazil, right, as things currently yeah. are, like there's no like regulation around that. But yeah, as you say, there's like the, the requirement to report literally every single transaction to the tenth decimal with someone's tax number to the to the so as everything you do in a centralized exchange in Brazil is reported to the government um, every yeah. buy and sell. So I guess it's kind of regulation, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's not the most encouraged. It's not the most Bitcoin friendly regulation. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's kind of defeats the point a little bit when it's like you know everything you do is just tracked and, and traced to the government. Um, well, somewhere that is uh, is very favorable uh, as things currently stand uh, to Bitcoin is El Salvador, somewhere you mentioned earlier that you guys travel to. And it's where um, I met both of you as well in person, finally, um, after years of, you know, a, a few talks on, online. Um, what was your... What was your overall feeling and experience like being in El Salvador? Because obviously, for me, it was kind of very different and kind of overwhelming a little bit. But how did you guys find it? Like, did you enjoy it? Did you? What did you find when you were talking to people about, you know, uh, accepting actual Bitcoin and uh, talking to just general people like taxi drivers, etc.? Like, how did you find the experience? And, and what did you think the people felt in El Salvador? We felt amazing because. Even the legal tender started running in September. We went in November, we met in November, 2021. And we thought that it was a lot easier to use Bitcoin and than in Brazil, for example. Uh, the citizens are really curious. They are trying to know how to make it happen, how to use Bitcoin and how to negotiate, how to transact wallet to wallet. And but it was pretty nice to, to see that citizens are open. The drivers, the hotels wanted to learn about how to accept Bitcoin in their business. And uh, we thought this, is, this was the best part because people, citizens were open and business were migrating to El Salvador. We talked to um, exchange owners that are Brazilians that were were in El Salvador when we went there and they were talking about ah, maybe let's migrate to El Salvador, let's open our company over there. And maybe this was uh, a curious part because we are seeing in real life people talking about migrate to El Salvador and how much it could improve the, um, the growth of the country. And for us, it was amazing. We want to come back there maybe in next year or another to see how the evolution went because they were really open and here in brazil people are open but not that much but the legal tender brought uh the the, the discussion about bitcoin to the mainstream to normal citizens that are not the coiners are not voted um to to Bitcoin community or to technological development. So it was pretty amazing. And we hope it, it, it grow even more. They are launching Bitcoin bonds right now. Let's see how it will grow. And Lawrence, uh, what, what did you felt? Did you try to use Bitcoin over El Salvador? And did you try to use Bitcoin here in Brazil? What was the main difference for you? What did you felt as well? Yeah, so I, I I kind of had the sim a similar experience to you with regards to like people being curious and like generally excited about it. Um, 
And uh, so, yeah, I, I found that quite encouraging. And yeah, when it comes to the experience of using it. So in El Salvador, I didn't I took a, a credit card, but um, I didn't use it uh, from memory um, and I didn't take any cash, no, no dollars at all. Um, so I literally just had my like had two lightning wallets, I had like moon wallet and blue wallet. And that was it. So basically, if they didn't accept Bitcoin, I was screwed. Um, but generally, I was with like I was always with people because we went as a team, a very full team. So uh, there was a few times where they didn't accept Bitcoin, and like someone would just pay for like three of us with with dollars if we had to, um, and then I'd then pay them back with Lightning because uh, everyone's happy to spend dollars and get Bitcoin, um, even even a bit refill. You know, if you can get some more Bitcoin, great. So um, yeah, my but my experience generally was that like most places so especially when you went to like bitcoin beach or even el tunco or um like the kind of more established like okay this is a place so like the, the you know, certain areas of the capital el tunco bitcoin beach that generally bitcoin was accepted pretty much everywhere um and it generally worked great unless they were using chivo wallet and then it worked terribly mm -hmm. <laughs> which i think was everyone's experience at the time uh, i don't know about now but at the time um but i did use chivo uh in uh where was it i went to denny's first time i've ever been there and all the us people listening uh, know what denny's is um so i went there and uh, spent with bitcoin and uh, it didn't actually pick up the transaction um and it turns out this was like a whole problem but like the lady working just didn't care so she was like yeah whatever i was like all right <laughs> so i just left <laughs> so I, just, I didn't have to pay twice um but it did go through in the end it's just that you know it didn't show on their system on, on their phone um but then yeah brazil um i yeah i have used bitcoin uh a few times here uh once was like uh with like a lawyer so it wasn't really like a in the store kind of thing um but the time i did use it in a store was back in yeah um i think it was like april may 2020 so during the pandemic um and i was in the north of the island of florinopolis and there was like an Italian restaurant that we walked past and they had like a Bitcoin accepted here sign. We were like, oh, shit. It's like my, my, my friends and I like uh, all went back there for lunch. Uh, and yeah, the owner was there and he was like super excited because I think no one had uh, tried to pay with Bitcoin for like two years, um, but they had in the past. And I was like, oh, OK, so then we yeah, we went through it. He re-downloaded his Bitcoin wallet because I think he'd like uh he'd basically given up on thinking people were going to send it to him and he had like a hardware wallet back at home and uh yeah it, it worked it was like high fee uh slow bit, <laughs> standard bitcoin transaction what's one of those situations where it's not like an advertisement for for using bitcoin um but it worked and uh, it was cool but i i don't really come across uh people accepting bitcoin that much in in brazil um well definitely not compared to el salvador so yeah, that's my kind of experience. But people are always willing to take free crypto uh, here, like um, like they are anywhere. But um, I've given away lots of uh, shit coins and, and and some Bitcoin as well to people over my time in Brazil, and and they usually get really happy when like a year later it's worth like you know <laughs> whatever times the amount. <laughs> so that's my experience. yeah. He, he, um, uh there's no place use accepting through Lightning. Most are on chain transactions. That's our main challenge around here in Brazil is to to make merchants know about Lightning and how it would facilitate the transactions with with Bitcoin. That for me, this is the biggest difference between El Salvador and Brazil because here Lightning is not that common. All, all right, everybody heard about Bitcoin cryptocurrencies, but Lightning is not something uh, that uh, Brazilians heard of. So I think that's our main challenge for the next years, trying to make everyone use Bitcoin through Lightning and heard about this kind of transactions. Because like you said, when we go to a merchant like Florianopolis or Porto Alegre, when we go went there, the employees don't have the wallet, don't know how to use it, or they, they, they left it. And okay, the sign is there, but no one is accepting anymore. So this is the, the main challenge for us to keep merchants accepting and how to use it through Lightning as well. Uh, what part of Brazil is like the most crypto friendly? Well, I would say Florianopolis because I went there, but I know there's a Jericoacoara beach where they are trying to implement something like El Salvador, uh, El Zonte, where a group of Bitcoiners started to teach the merchants over. It's a tourist beach in Brazil, Jericoacoara, it's uh, touristic. And a group of Bitcoiners starting to help uh, merchants to accept true lightning. 
So this is a place we want to go to visit and see how it's working over there, how is uh, the usability, how merchants are accepting, it's easy for them or not. But I would say these two places, Florianópolis and Jericoacoara Beach. We hope that other places start to, to grow. But here in Porto Alegre, there's a lot of places accepting, but also on-chain. Most of them are accepting on-chain. And if I would say through Lightning, it would be uh, Jericoacoara. Yeah, I um, I remember speaking to the guy at Jericho. I can never say that damn name of the place, Jericho. Jericho, I can never say it. I remember speaking to him back when he's like kind of. I think he came onto one of my spaces, and it was really early days and in, in this in the project. Um, uh, and uh, we chatted on Telegram a little bit, and I offered to help. But um, it's really interesting what he's what what's going on there. Like the it's it's cool that they're trying to do like a Brazilian version of Bitcoin Beach. Um, and uh. If anyone is listening to this who's interested, like go check it out. Uh, I, th I think the tag is something like Bitcoin Beach BR or something. I, I might be wrong, but if you type it in on Google or Twitter, you'll find it. Um, and yeah, it's a really cool idea and project. So if you want to support that, then there's ways that you can. Um, and yeah, what you said about Floripa as well, uh, the meetups I've been to are, are pretty impressive. Like there's a lot of uh, gringos and a lot of like local Brazilians as well. Um, who kind of come and, and you get 40, 50 people like each one and they happen like twice a week and, you know, they're different places in, in the island. So Florianopolis has got a lot of buzz. Um, but as you say, Lightning not really um, not really utilized much uh, from my experience in Brazil. And, and that's kind of how I um, got most acquainted with Refill really actually myself, like because I had used Refill in like 2019, I think it was um when i was just on, like exploring what the hell lightning even is like i'd never even heard of it and a friend of mine sent me some some lightning and then um yeah but being brazil i actually used it a ton like when i first came for like ifood and uh uber eats and just things like that because and and using uber because like i i <laughs> i think at the time like my debit card charged like really expensive fees to use it abroad and all this stuff um so that's why i then ended up working uh, with bitrefill because i was like well this is really cool like it's actually helping me a ton in brazil um so i found uh, that was a useful service because of that i guess you said like one of the challenges is getting people to accept lightning uh when it comes to teaching people about uh bitcoin and crypto there's not tons of content out there in portuguese like there's probably more in spanish and a lot more in english obviously um but not low from my experience probably only you know a small percentage of the population here in brazil speaks english um i would say uh although a lot of people have a good basic knowledge um so what 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 is like the best uh what what are the biggest challenges for you when it comes to actually educating people uh, and what would you say are like the best kind of places to to find good portuguese language content obviously there's yourselves um but like um, uh, as well as that i would say that uh, the biggest challenge was before the pandemic something really simple that is how to use qr codes that's about uh, digital education so that's the um, the perception of the need that we have about uh because uh, crypto and bitcoin most of the content is in English, so this is a barrier for Brazilians. Uh, uh, the majority of the Brazilians don't understand English, so and digital education, like how to use a QR code. But with the pandemic, unfortunately, we started to use a lot of QR codes in restaurants, to menus, and in advertisements on the on the TV. So uh, Brazilians are more um, use it right now to some digital uh, use, like. Uh, QR codes and how to make digital payments. That was a challenge before the pandemic. Now it's more common around here. And uh, for me, the biggest challenge is to make Brazilians see Bitcoin not just through price, but to the changes that it provides and how people can be sovereign with their finance, with their um, with their money, and how to really uh, don't fall into scams. There are a lot of scams here in Brazil, and it's hard to differentiate what is a scam and what is not. So this would be the basic challenge. There are a lot of challenges, but this would be the first ones. I guess Twitter here in Brazil is really strong. There are a lot of Bitcoiners over there. I think that would be a good place to start. There are our channel, Use Crypto. There are uh, Fernando Urich here in Brazil as well, Bitcoineros that talk about Bitcoin and um, teach other Brazilians. 
And I would say, Lawrence, you talked before about Beat Perfume, and Beat Perfume saved me a lot of times. We were in San Francisco trying to use Bitcoin, and we uh, searched on the internet how Bit, uh, how uh, San Francisco would accept, which merchants would accept Bitcoin, and I, on the search on the YouTube on the Google said uh, San Francisco is the best place to use cryptocurrency. There's a lot of places accepting, like a lot of places uh, tagged in the Google Maps, and we uh, registered all of them in our search. When we went there, none of them accepted. And Bitrefill saved us with Uber, with uh, gift cards, because if it wasn't for Bitrefill, we wouldn't uh, have how to survive in San Francisco because we just uh, went with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in our wallets. So that's that's the big difference between what is on internet and what is in real life. So it's good that we have this tool to to use and how to to go to other places and to spend Bitcoin on other cryptocurrencies because not always what is in in internet is what we represents in real life. So that's a, a good story about how how to check first before you spend, before you go to the places. So I guess that's it. There's a lot of content right now. People can search for us, can search for Twitter, uh, Bitcoineros, Fernando Urish, a lot of content over there. A while back, like probably like a year or two ago, I remember hearing a lot of fanfare about the Brazilian government's digital payment system, PIX. Is that still yes. a thing? Do people use it? Yes, people use it a lot. Uh, this was one of the things that helped, uh, ironically, to teach Brazilians about how a digital payment works, because it's pretty much like a, a Bitcoin transactions. There's a, there are QR code and there's a key that you can use your cell phone or an email or just a, 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 key, a key. So it helped us, uh, helped us to e explain to Brazilians how a Bitcoin payment works. In the beginning, we were really angry about PIX because they were competing with like uh, cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin kind of payment. But it's it's really a thing. It got uh, traction really fast between Brazilians because it's fast and anyone can can use between the banks because uh, the the central bank forced us forced the big banks to use it. So when the big banks have this system, all most of the Brazilians started to to adopt it, and it's it's happening. Brazilians are using just like credit cards, the, the same proportion of uh, adoption. But here in Brazil as well, with the credit cards have some facilities where Brazilians can parcelate. They can pay some something in a small portions through time. So Brazilians are kind of addicted to the credit cards because of this kind of payments. They um, don't have the money right now, so they parcelate the, the debt and it's a re really common use. And PIX will make it as well. Brazilian Central Bank will facilitate this for sealing the, the, the value of the debt. I know like in El Salvador that there's a high percentage of the people that don't have access to the financial system. They don't have bank accounts. They don't have credit cards. Is Brazil um, banked or are they mostly unbanked, the citizens? Pretty much banked, like 70% or more of the population is banked. It's like the opposite of El Salvador. Here, our, um, our banking system, it's really uh, pretty strong it's one of the strongest in the world so ev everyone has a, a bank account that's why pix uh, got adopted pretty fast compared to other other uh, bank innovations so yeah it's it's trying to it would be hard to compete but here banks are adopting bitcoin cryptocurrencies we were one of the first countries in the world to have like an etf our um, uh, B3, our stock, big stock exchange, is uh, will tokenize assets. So they are trying to to bring crypto innovations through the fiat system. Yeah, I gotta say, Pix is pretty good. Like <laughs> using it, it's, <laughs> it's saved my skin because my uh, card, like sometimes on some terminals here, doesn't work. 
for some reason yeah. i don't know why and so then like i'm sat there with groceries already and i'm like shit and so then i've like used picks through pick pay and i'm like and it's just like instant and to be fair it's great but it's no better than lightning um to yeah. be honest um uh, so yeah i mean uh, when it comes to like a user experience in store it's it's pretty much the same thing and if anything when i describe bitcoin and then lightning to people who are here they're like oh like it's like picks and i'm like well yeah, yeah. okay it is yeah but but like you don't need to rely on like a central like authority they're like oh okay cool um so yeah it's generally good to explain to people what you said about scams as well i mean that's that's a problem i think there's there's quite like it's a problem everywhere i guess and i know there's like a history of quite like bad scams especially in brazil like i remember my friends showing me these different scams over the years from like different youtube people and stuff um but one thing i struggle with is like i'll explain I'll, I'll talk to like close friends of mine and friends back home in the uk i'll talk to them and and, and they know i'm involved in the, the world of crypto so i'll get messages often like oh you know what do you think about this like trading bot thing. <laughs> it's just like, I often get like trading bots or, um, and it's so common, it happens all the time. Or like, oh, you know, this 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 person or this website says like, if I just put the money there, then they'll trade it and it will make me like, you know, double the amount every month or something. It's like, oh, <laughs> like it's always the same thing that people seem to fall, fall for. Um, but I, if anything, I kind of find that once I talk to people in Brazil about it and explain like, hey, you know, you should keep it yourself for this reason and that reason. And, and then usually people are more open to it in the UK because I think in the UK, uh, we're almost like spoiled that like, okay, there are scams, but like with the banking and the government and stuff, generally people haven't had major issues with their money for the last 30 plus years or something. Whereas, you know, in Brazil, you had like Plano Color in the early 90s and you've got like, you know, a lot of like the, the currency destabilizing and devaluing quickly. And so there's all these things that I think mean Brazilians are more open to and like understand immediately the idea of like hold your own damn Bitcoin like not your keys uh, so I feel like they understand that a lot more um, that'd be yeah my feeling I don't know if you think the same yeah. thing or not sure completely in the 90s there were a president that confiscated the savings account of Brazilians the color so most pre the, the youngest don't remember this so the, didn't leave it but it's a scar in our economy. So when we talk about this confiscation of the savings, Brazilians uh, quickly understand why you need to, to keep your own keys and to uh, save your own Bitcoin in your uh, wallet, your cold storage. So this is, um, I think, yes, this is the, the, the reason why Brazilians are more open to save their own keys. And Inflation as well here is something that keeps uh, helping us to, to educate about the needs of Bitcoin that in other countries. Now there's inflation, but two or three years ago, there wasn't. I suppose like what we're to, to switch the topic a little bit, but something I'm interested in is um, you guys to date have obviously uh, created like a successful YouTube and Instagram and, and, and general following and, and you're educating people. And I know that you're currently working on like a, a Bitcoin education website um what is your kind of what's your kind of goal when it comes to all this stuff like do you have like a future goal in mind or like a, a dream that you're trying to achieve and like a kind of a roadmap to that or like what what, what do you guys think is gonna what we're we gonna see from user crypto in the next you know few years uh, if, if all goes well yeah we want to we started a educational uh channel in youtube went to instagram and now we are we are going to um, ed tech like a, a platform of educational content for, for Brazilians, and don't um, depend only on YouTube because we know YouTube can cut us off any moment they like. So we started to create our own platform where uh, our followers can uh, enter and consume our content, and. We want to grow over there. We just launched it. It was like two weeks ago. We just launched this platform and to create content. Brazilians will be able to uh, understand Bitcoin, learn how to, to buy, how to use a, a wallet. Uh, everything will be there. We want to be maybe the biggest platform in Brazil or maybe Latin America, maybe in the world. Let's see where we can go. And that's it for now for the short term. Maybe in the future, we want to create more uh, products and more uh, tools for Brazilians to understand Bitcoin, like a Bitcoin calculator in Portuguese, because most of the tools are in English. 
So that's what we want to make uh, in our platform to create tools to help Brazilians to calculate, to see through other signs how to use Bitcoin in their daily lives. And that's, that's it. We, we want to grow from there. What's the most popular wallet in Brazil that people use? Most popular. Great question. I think it's Electrum or Exodus, Edge Wallet as well. And the cold wallets like Trezor and Ledger. But the most, there, there's not one most most common. They're pulverized. And do people, um, I know there's like Brazilian Bitcoin exchanges. Do people favor those or are they trying to use Binance uh, because there's more volume? They use a lot Binance, but there is uh, Brazilian uh, exchanges that they are really old. Like they started in 2013, like uh, Mercado Bitcoin, Foxbit. Uh, Bitcoin trade. There's a lot of uh, exchanges here in Brazil, but because of the volume and the um, number of crypto, Brazilians use a lot of Binance as well. Yeah, I think Binance has something like 30, roughly 35% of the market. I think something around that. And then there's like Bitpresso, Mercado Bitcoin, Nova Dax, Foxbit, Bitcoin to you are like the, the other ones that like lag behind it from from my understanding, anyway, I can, I can say. But yeah, Binance has got a pretty strong foothold. But Mercado Bitcoin's expanding, I think Foxbit potentially too, but Mercado Bitcoin's trying to expand out into um, other areas of uh, South America, uh, I think too. Uh, they got funding for that. So it's exciting to see like the Brazilian uh, exchanges and companies grow outside of Brazil. Uh, it'd be cool to see how that goes. Yeah, and that's a um, curious movement. A lot of exchanges, Brazilian exchanges are moving abroad, but also uh, big exchanges are coming to Brazil. We heard about Kraken, Coinbase are coming uh, here, and maybe other companies from that, that uh, are not exchanges are coming here too. I think because of this environment, uh, Brazilians are curious, our currency is not that good, we have a history of inflation. Our central bank is open for innovation. Maybe it's a good uh, place for companies to come and com Brazilian companies are growing from here to other places as well. You mentioned that there's a lot of interest in coins that are other than Bitcoin, like different altcoins. What, what's the most popular, like Ethereum? Ethereum, Solana, many coins, Shiba Doge. Brazilians are crazy about shit coins. And they are really popular because of this illusion of getting rich quick. And but we, we, we think that is a start. People come to speculate through price and those who want to learn more and to study Bitcoin fundamentals will stay and will keep um, study. And that's a process. I've met quite a lot of people into Ethereum, especially in Floripa and like areas like that, which is it's cool. Like there's a lot of people really into to ETH and like the community seems really strong and, and a lot of these people were really interested in like DAOs and like building up groups of you know interested people working together and so I, I think that's quite like an exciting thing so there seems to be a lot of that I remember chilies as well was really big for a while in Brazil like a lot of people seem to want to buy chilies <laughs> um chili so can because I think because the, the value went up so quick <laughs> that's why <laughs> yeah and, and chilies has something to do with football and soccer and here people are crazy uh, with soccer and they're passionate about soccer so they keep two things together crypto and soccer and people went crazy about chilies and all the fun tokens that were launched uh, last year are there any brazilian based like crypto projects that we might have heard of uh, brazilian projects there are some uh, most of them are about wallets and exchanges we see this uh, Jericoacoara movement starting to teach uh, Brazilians, but they're using crypto, creating platforms, but most of them are through negotiation, exchanges and business creating access to negotiate Bitcoin through their, um, their, their business models. What we are seeing a lot right now are traditional business integrating Bitcoin cryptocurrencies to their business, like Mercado Pago, that is a uh, vertent of Mercado Livre, that it's an Argentinian company uh, that came to Brazil years ago. Now they are starting to offering uh, Bitcoin and crypto purchase in their platform. 
but Brazilians can't withdraw. They just can buy and, and receive as a cash cashback in their app, but they can't withdraw the, their cryptos. Also, there is 99 Pay that was kind of like an Uber in the past, and your, uh, it still is like an Uber, like a car transportation app. But they are also um, letting Brazilians to negotiate and receive cash back in Bitcoin. So we are perceiving this uh, business model changing and integrating Bitcoin in their uh, negotiations. Quite a few different Brazilian projects that are like smaller crypto based projects that I've come across in time. Um, but like a lot of them are, you know, pretty. Uh, they like usually a bit weird or dodgy seeming like um, but there's usually some like this there's, there's, there's some interesting ones but it's not like uh there's not many around bitcoin that i usually find anyway um so as you say it's more like exchanges and on the business side that's my experience anyway yeah the, not not that much about bitcoin most of them are negotiation exchanges and crypto uh most uh, voted and traditional banks the traditional banks are coming offering cryptocurrencies but like through etfs and through funds but it's not like a trade negotiation it's true fiat system integrating bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as an opportunity of investment for brazilians but there are not that much uh, projects strictly about bitcoin crypto and trying to grow from there from uh, business models most of them are about uh, exchanges since everyone has bank accounts and there's lots of exchanges is there any peer-to-peer -peer market like do people use local bitcoins or like binance peer-to-peer -to, -peer to sell directly to each other yeah they, they use there is um a website called catalogo p2p or catalogo p2p and uh but it's common but it's the it's not the main uh, tool that brazilians use most of Braz brazilians use it use exchanges to buy and to sell Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. And this is um, an old project that tried to create a ranking of peer-to-peer -peer Brazilians that uh, offer Bitcoin crypto negotiation. But we have here a lot of scams as well, with when uh, fake profiles contact people through social media, to Instagram, through Twitter, trying to offer Bitcoin crypto peer-to-peer, -peer, but Catalogo P2P tried to rank the, those peer-to-peer -to, -peer to Brazilians. Paxos, Paxo, it's not really common. Local Bitcoin is not, not really common here. Yes, Brazilians use it, but not that much as uh, exchanges. Has crypto made it to uh, pop culture? like Brazilian pop culture, like in, in the United States, we see like Paris Hilton releasing NFTs or like sports teams having NFTs and, and things like that. Um, is that a thing in Brazil? Yes, but Brazilians were a little late here. When things started in the USA, people start to notice about the NFTs, the metaverse hype and some uh, celebrities here in Brazil, yes, they, they, they bought NFTs like Neymar, for example, and this made a fuss about NFTs and the crypto market and metaverse. But when the price went down, Brazilians uh, stopped to search about this, this content and these tools. And right now we are at this moment where demand is a little low, the price went down, and nobody's talking that much about NFTs. But it's a short term, you know, the, the hype went in, until November, December, and right now everybody forgot. Maybe when the price went up, Brazilians will come back to talk about it again. But the same hype that we see globally, like NFTs, Metaverse, here in Brazil, it's that strong as well. Yes, we see celebrities talking about it and launching their, their own uh, NFTs. I think hopefully people out there listening are going to get a good idea of um, what it's like in Brazil with cryptocurrency and like the differences uh, between where they are and, and, and Brazil. So. That's really useful, and and um, I usually uh, when I'm when I'm here, whenever I uh, meet people who are interested about uh, Bitcoin and stuff, I usually uh, well, I always say like just go on Instagram and go and use crypto. <laughs> and I just just watch that <laughs> stuff because so I'm like it's like simple and easy and like friendly way of learning about it. Um, whereas like there's some there's a lot of channels that are a bit like 
like super trading oriented and like kind of out like shit coins and stuff or um or like just like very kind of like annoying to watch <laughs> so um yeah i think you guys do it do it best um when it comes to the the portuguese language um that'd be my opinion but yeah i thanks for I do, I do have one one last question before we yeah. go um seeing as you're a content producer in the portuguese language uh do you have like a following in portugal as well we thought about it but we uh, didn't go forward because we thought brazil is so huge it's like a continent size country let's um uh, producing con uh, in portuguese brazilian portuguese and maybe we can create something like in portugal but we have a lot of fo followers from europe portugal and africa the places that uh, speak portuguese as well so the followers fi find us the people from from other countries but that's something to talk about if exchange can go to other countries maybe use crypto could go as well but that's a future thing maybe in the next years you yeah, have to start speaking with a portugal portuguese accent which hey for me from my perspective like i cannot understand a damn word people say in portugal like nothing it's like very yeah. um kind of like it's very different there's like a kind of i don't know it sounds like a kind of sort, of, sort of like a not lisp but there's like a very different sound to the accent and it sounds almost like russian to me like i can't understand a word anyone says in portugal um but there you go um but I, i'm sure like it's easier if you speak uh like your native language is portuguese right so for brazilians i'm sure it's easier to understand people in portugal and vice versa um yeah okay well th thanks so much for for joining us today carol it's been awesome i uh, really appreciate you coming on and i'm sure everyone out there listening has appreciated it as well um and as i said before if, if you want to check out it's on use crypto on uh, instagram and well youtube you can just google it quite frankly and, and you guys will come up uh, i think you're on twitter as well um and yeah i think the other thing we mentioned was the um bitcoin beach project as well like check that out in brazil see if you can support it if you want to support it um but yeah thank you for joining us it's been uh, amazing is there anything you want to like uh, say or anything you want to like uh, you know uh, bring attention to or anything like that before you we head out thank you lawrence for it. it was a pleasure to be here i'm a big fan of bit review and i'm i'm a big user of bit review i'm pretty happy to be here talking to you so uh, anyone that wants to check out use crypto and our job and our work in brazil it's it would be amazing to talk about and to show our work and thank you for this talk and for this opportunity to talk with you as well. And hope to see you again when we go, I don't know, other conference or maybe El Salvador or maybe Brazil when you were there, we're here. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I should be back hopefully again this year once I, I'll leave soon, but I should be back again this year, fingers crossed. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know, never know, I might be able to pop by. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Everyone out there listening, um, have an amazing day, week, month, year. Uh, we love you lots. Have Keep enjoying life and loving life um, and keep on buying Bitcoin. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Valeu. Ciao, ciao.